<laughs> say it, bro. He said, say it, please. Okay, no worries. Get Thank out you, here, bro. <laughs> Look, to all the homies out there, I'm about to drop a major key. For all of you right now, the Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped is the number one tool you need for all of your grooming needs. It's going to keep you looking fresh from head to toe. So what I want you guys to do is head over right now to manscaped.com, enter the promo code NAV20, and enjoy 20% off plus free shipping on your first purchase. You're in the lab. All right, so before we even get started, give me the give me the breakdown of what's going on with One Piece, just real quick, because I know you probably had ten thousand episodes in. I'm like a, I'm like a five hundred and. Five hundred and this is Calvin. That's Calvin. Go ahead, go ahead. That's, that's not live. What's up? Uh, what's the plan tomorrow? Uh, meet at my house six o'clock. You got to head out, head right out there. You heard, you heard it correct. <laughs> Six o'clock. Six? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to get it in early, and then leave. We're all in the same car. I got I got a car uh, for us to go out there, and then uh, so nobody has to burn extra gas. And then that's it. You just want me to film everything? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to play basketball or something. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so yeah that, that's it you want me to bring my drone or anything or good you bring it is he on facetime yeah, hold, no, him, hold him up here when you're done so huh when, uh, so, i guess nav said you got a ball from uh, i'm talking to nav right now <laughs> hey calvin do me a favor put put his face on the screen can i see can we hold it up to the camera uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Calvin, do me a favor because we're filming the podcast right now. I want you to say, "Hey, guys, this is Calvin Mai, and welcome so, to Find Your well, Break." It's, it's not connected. The the it's not connected. No, he's not speaker for me. I got you. Let's see. He he said he wants you to say what? Say look. Say <laughs> this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is Calvin Mai. Welcome to the Find Your Breakthrough Podcast. This is Calvin Mai. Welcome to the Find Your Breakthrough Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> say it, bro. He said, say it, please. Okay, no worries. Get Thank out you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yep, 6 o'clock. All right. <laughs> well, you get a nap in or something. Yep, I'm not right now. All right. All right. This is the perfect way to start the podcast. If you guys don't know, Calvin's a vital part to our entire team. Uh, what's What's been the favorite part about One Piece? Give me like the... I know you've had a lot of tear jerker moments and your heart's been breaking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's, it's all good. I, I guess if anybody knows Marineford, they just know like that's what, one of the best arcs. It's just like, I don't know. It's just like the uh, journey and it, it's like long and fun and exciting. It's just, it's just a, it's just a really good show and you can't really understand it until you watch it. And it's just like uh, so many life lessons to learn within the show and, I like Naruto, but just better. <laughs> it's just better. Like, is, this the, is this the best anime? I don't know. I mean, there's so many really good ones out right now. No, that you hard, like, because I've seen some ones that got off to a better start mm. and the animation's better. And you got to think about One Piece, older. like, way older. So who knows what it'd have been like now. But uh, it's really good, bro. Like, in terms of like everything, all of it, it might be, might be better. it's better than Dragon Ball. Yeah, that's crazy. And Dragon Ball is like, it's hard for me to say it, but like after <laughs> watching, I'm like, the story, the story, not the action, but the story, like, it's amazing, bro. I'm, I'm like, it's at the point where like I'm losing a little bit of my life watching the show, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> I don't care. Like, it's, it's that because I'm learning so much, and like, you know, we're like, it's giving me crazy ideas, so yeah. I'm like fully okay with it. <laughs> And it's never gonna leave my memory, man. That was just the best part about it. How how many episodes is Sky gonna watch with you without even knowing he's watching? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> a lot. Yeah, he already has. <laughs> it's just a good show, bro. It's just like it's hard to explain too because you could pick up on it in the middle of it and not like it, and like just think it's weird. But if you start from the beginning and you really keep up with the journey, like they're so good about. Uh, 
something that happened on the first episode connecting it to like 550, which is nuts really? to me, bro. Dang, because you got to think about it. This, it, they, it may have been like 10 years in the making, like th- this development. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. And so, like, for me to go all the way back, it's like, oh wow, okay. This, this is like unbelievable. And I'm watching it so fast, so it's easy for me to remember all that stuff. And so it's just like, it's an amazing show, bro. And I immediately understood, because I always like get like a top five on Twitter, like of anime. And I would never have one piece. I didn't watch it. I'm not going to like put it in. I ain't watched it. Everybody was like, how you not put one piece in it? And I gave it a chance when I was a kid. But like now after watching, I was like, oh, okay. It's that good, bro. <laughs> it makes sense. The story It's that good. It is just, you're going to lose a chunk of your life, but it's worth it. And I, and I heard that. And I'm mad. I'm almost mad. I'm going through it so, through it so fast. But it's it's like so. It's it's a show about being a good person and following your dreams, no matter what. That's what it's about. Just being a good person that's and great. following your dreams. So like, simple. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's what it's about, bro. And just living how you want to live, free. That's what it's about. And, yeah. and and doing right by your friends, being loyal to your friends, to to anything. That's what that's what the show is about. I always thought there's so many meanings behind the animes. That one, that one, that's what it's about. And when I got to like, I don't know, like in a hundred somewhere, 200, 300s, I was like, oh, so this is what it's about. Like, there's nothing. And you know, John told me, John kind of told me that, but I started figuring it out like on my own. You just got to see it. It's amazing. That's sick. Okay. So before we hop into talk about the shoes a little bit today, you, I don't think people have seen you really other than the NBA stream, like since I was born. I know you've been yeah. tired and it's been crazy. So, like, can you give some? <laughs> just like, it's like too much. Like, Zero sleep. Like you gotta just, you know, just take care of your kid and try to pick up when things, you know, get, you know, when you catch up to sleep. It's really, really hard. Um, but it's, it's like almost like what I just explained. Like, you just have to go through it to really love it. And, um, you know, the idea of having a kid is cool, but it's an extra commitment. You know, I'm going through. I'm going through a lot, man. I mean, it's just so many things happening all over the place. And, um, you know, it's cool because your kid hasn't done anything. He's just like, there's no, he hasn't sinned. He hasn't betrayed anybody. He's just this being that counts on you, you know? And so, uh, you know, I'm not, I always tell people I'm not going to force him to play basketball. He's going to be heavy, heavily influenced. Um, but just seeing him in this state, it's just like, well, I don't, I'm not ready for him to go through life and like how hard it is to be good at basketball or just anything. Like, you know, you just want to just the kid to just have fun for the whole, for his whole life, but you got to teach him about life. Just like every, we all have to learn about it and it, it just is what it is, but he's just so raw. Like literally when we talk about like oh, a player being raw and he has so much potential, he is the definition of that because you can mold him any way that you want. If you bring him into a bad situation, he's going to grow up to be a bad kid. There's a high possibility of that. Um, if you, like, you know, if I just trained him to, to shoot a gun for 20 years, 18 years, he's going to be really good at shooting a gun. So, you know, everything that that's happening right now is, is molding him. And it's so cool to, like, be a part of that because it's your own. So... Um, but it is a man, it's a it's a commitment. And it's a lot of things that just come out of your way. For me, it's just like that you did not expect. Um, but it is what it is. Like, you know, it's I always wanted to be a pops, a big, big brother many, uh, father the father to one, you know, and so um it's just a whole different journey that I'm on and I'm looking forward to. Um, and I can't wait. But yeah, I'm, I mean it's been str- it's been tough getting back into basketball because like it took a week off. Yeah, uh, with him, and even still, it's just like now I'm losing sleep. Um, it's just hard to get on any type of pattern because right now he's so his pattern. I mean, he just wants Erratic, to poop, right? eat, <laughs> and whatever, and sleep. Like you know, sometimes you don't know when he's gonna wake up. So it's tough. It's tough, bro. <laughs> this is the definition of adulthood and and being a parent. Yeah, but I know. I know you have like a, a. I can't even explain it, but just a crazy amount of love for him. So it's going to be cool to see, like you said, how he grows up and like how you guys mold him. You'll see him. one day. It's a, it's different. Yeah. It's totally, it's totally different than anything you can imagine. <laughs> and seriously, you'll, you'll see, you're going to see it. Anybody who has a kid knows like it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's different. 
It's, it's just, you can't explain it. You just you gotta have a little you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Little update for you guys. Um, we're going to have Dev on the podcast, like I said, hopefully as much as we can. But today we're going to do a quick one talking about the shoe. So basically what I want to do, I want to give people some context because it's still dope. The fact that there's an in the lab shoe and the fact that it basically is all stemmed from just one person, which is, which is you. Um, there's like a, a little backstory, if you don't mind giving it in terms of just winter and like, just kind of like the backstory of like how this came about and how we kind of promised to this, you know, to make these shoes for you. I think it was like four or five years ago. It's actually like a very simple story. Like basically it was probably more than that now, now that I think about it, but basically winter was a 10,000 hour span and he ended up working for Adidas and he brought us out there. Uh, George, I was, a, yeah, George went, no, Chuck went first. Chuck and I we went out there first and, uh, you know, made the whole documentary and he was just like, you know, it was fun, like growing as brothers, like we consider each other brothers. And we have since like that first time me going out there and just spending time and just connecting on an emotional level. And ever since then, he's had a kid. This kid might be like four or five years old now. Um, and then I have one. So life kind of, you know, took us, I mean, just naturally, because I lived in the U.S. and he lived in China. But while I was out there, he told me, he's like, dude, one day I'm going to make you a shoe. I'm going to make your first shoe. And I was, you know, you hear that. And it's just like, everybody always has promises and, you know, break promises or they just say things. But he did it. Like, he, you know, he, he hit me up one day. He was just like, yo, like, this is your shoe. You know, this is, <laughs> yeah. you know, under, under his personal brand, but it was just really cool to see that, you know, that he had created that. Um, and it was like a live thing and, you know, he made something out of him. So he had broke apart from Adidas, not in a bad way, but he just wanted to do his own thing. And, uh, he did it, you know, and, and now he's working on the third shoe, <laughs> which is, which is nuts. So, but it's cool to see, you know, his vision kind of come to life and, you know, he'd be out there running events and, pop-up shops and just all kind of stuff. And, you know, as you, you can speak to this, it's just everybody thinks it's so easy to do certain things. Like you just come out with a video and blow up, Man, you know, bro, the, the clothing it, business is one thing, but the shoe business is another thing, you know, as we both know, it's just tough. And, uh, you know, hearing some of the struggles that he would go through, you know, as just a de developing the shoe and, you know, creator and the, the lead director, like, it's just, it's tough, you know, and you got to make a certain amount of shoes and this and that, and you got to fit it right. And this mold costs this much. There's a lot of money that goes in there. They invested like a lot of money going into their company, the him, uh, he, you know, and one, I forgot the other guy, they all came from Adidas and they just made a huge investment and, you know, now they're starting, you know, really to take off. And it's nice to be a part of that. It's definitely exciting for us. What's, what was the, what was the feeling like when you first saw the shoe? Like, I think he probably sent you a picture, but when you first got this shoe. Well, it's just your own, you know, it's just like, you know, it has a logo on it. It's just really cool. And, and you're, you're excited. It's more excited to just get it out to the world. Like, yo, like, yeah, look where we came from. And we got, you know, who's, who else is doing this? That's another thing too. Like, who else is doing this right now? So to be able to like look at that and see that and just process it all and be proud of that, it's, it's something special. So that's where you know that's what at first sight is like, dang, like you know we're actually like growing a brand and something's happening here. So it's crazy because we always talk talked about making our own fits, and the only thing missing was like a pair of shoes. Yeah, <laughs> to be able to complete a fit head to toe is wild to me. Yeah. Um, when I first saw this shoe, I thought it was like dope. I think we both agreed that the design was sick. The way they did the sock and the lacing, everything was just like so clean, different carbon fiber plates. Like those guys are like next level when it comes to like designing the shoe. But then they did this thing. They made this guy. Right. <laughs> Well, at first when I saw those, I didn't like them as much as the other one until I put them on. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I like them better. On foot, yeah. Like on foot, they just look way better to me. And so, um, and they're and they're actually more comfortable. The funny thing about <laughs> the funny thing about the first shoes, and I couldn't even talk about it for a while until I figured out the problem. So like I kept rubbing and like getting like my my heel was bleeding. And I always thought like the the shoe was defective. And I wanted to tell people. 
And it was just like, nobody was complaining about it. So I was like, oh, I'm just not saying anything, I guess. And the problem was, is I had, uh, and they did the same thing with the second shoe. Yeah, yeah. So, Cause I got, I got a, uh, the problem was I got a smaller size. Cause I don't like my, when my feet look heck of big. <laughs> and so um, I got, what, I was wearing 11 and I really wear a 12. And so no wonder that it was like causing my heel to bleed because <laughs> they were just rubbing up against the skin. So I had a whole size smaller. And so when I got the regular shoe, the my actual size, I was like, oh, like this is great. Like this is super <laughs> comfortable. And you no, know, because I'm used to playing in whatever that I have. Like I don't really care. Like, you know, I, I play the bands, I play in this shoe. And the Adidas came along, they were like, Yeah, put this shoe on. I was like, all right, like I don't really care. <laughs> You know, Under Armour make it send me the shoe to test it out. All right, they all do the same thing. Like it's always funny that people about put so much value in the shoe, shoes, and like want to charge like eight hundred, nine hundred, ten thousand dollars, whatever. Because like in my opinion, it's just you walk in them, <laughs> like you put them on, you walk in them, you run in them, and <laughs> you know it's not like they're gonna make you fly. You know, I've seen dudes dunk in Timberland boots. Yeah. So, you know, and it's not like even the shade, like our shoes or anybody else's shoes. It's just like I always thought of shoes like that. So that's why I could always play in anything. It was like didn't buy, I just like basketball. So but yeah, that was the kind of weird story about my shoe. Like, you know, I, it was rubbing up against my heel and I was too stupid to realize I was too it was too small. So. <laughs> so do you even care if it's a high top or a low top? You literally just throw it on a hoop. No, I don't care. Do you prefer as long as I don't because I don't. I stopped twisting my ankle like a while back. I mean, knock on wood, but um, long as I don't like twist my ankle in it or like don't feel it just falling off my foot, like I'm fine. I like, high top. I got, I got all kind of shoes in the closet. Um, high top, low top, mid. It don't matter. <laughs> Laceless. <laughs> shoe, have shoelaces. I don't care. Like, Laceless. As long as, long as like I, they don't hinder me, then I'm fine. So first shoe to second shoe to the potential third shoe, which is being designed. I think you've seen a sneak yeah. peek of it. Like, what's your thought on just seeing the initial? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's also a good shoe. He just has, like, so the sick thing about what Winter does is he'll, like, concept it after something. So he'll call it, like, the fang or something. And it'll be, like, something that centers around. You'll see a piece that reminds you of, like, a wolf fang. And his his uh the idea about it uh, behind it is like brotherhood, you know, like you know making people feel a part of something when they wear this shoe and you know taking on a certain persona when you wear it like a wolf does, you know, when it's time to eat, and it kind of just connects to basketball. And I was like, when when I saw that stuff, like this was sick for that, you know. He he did that same thing with the spear, uh, you know. He he said that was off of spin moves. You know, like all the spin moves that he saw me do and, and ISO and just, and so I was, you know, and, and if you look at it, you'll see all the like circles all around it. I was like, oh, that's pretty sick. You know, just to, just to design it after that. I was like really cool, creative for him to do that. So, you know, like I said, man, this dude is just, he's just on a different level. What I really like too about his shoe is there's more room for canvas. So there's more canvas space. So instead of just sticking a logo on it, which we know all brands do, uh, there's more to like to to do on the actual shoe. Yes. You know, more artwork that you could put on the actual shoe. So you're not just focused on the Nike check or you're not just focused on the Adidas sign, which, you know, like I said, it's no knock against anybody else. I just like the fact that, you know, it's, it's able to have more stuff that you could do. Like on the first one, the laces go all the way down on the side. You know, in the middle, and then you got the sock, and you got the black stripe that goes on on the heel part, and you know it lifts up, kind of like Sonic, like Sonic shoes. You know, in the middle, you know, the, the little <laughs> yeah. play. It's just, it's just cool stuff that you can do with the shoe, and uh, you know, he and he's an artist, like so draw and do all that type of stuff. Like he he designed like some some uh, posters that I have in the office right now, and so like just to see all the stuff that he did, I was like, okay, this this dude is like he's sick. Somebody you want to build with. Yeah, winner, winner's dope. That whole team is sick. Um, something I want to add in, because I we touched on it briefly. I don't know if it was a podcast or something else before, but just the delay. The, that COVID, the fact that COVID really, really messed up everything, not only for our brand, but millions of brands everywhere, but the supply chain got messed up. And that's why the shoe was super, super limited this year. Yeah, it and just sucked. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, 
pretty much because of COVID. Yeah. For the most part, yeah. you know, that's, that's all it was, you know, and, you know, we wanted to get hella shoes out to people. We just couldn't. Mm-hmm. You know, we kind of we were limited to, you know, shipping across, you know, it was a lot of stuff that like heavy basketballs. Like, remember how long it took heavy basketballs to come? You know, it's, at that one it point. So long. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. sucks. And so, like, you know, you're you're getting a bunch of people, supply and demand. You're getting a bunch of people that want to cop some basketballs, but we can't because we're waiting on it. It's taking two months and they're shipping it by boat, you know. So I mean, you know, it, it just it just sucks. There's so much that goes into all this, but it's the price you pay when you're trying to like build a brand. Yep, hundred percent. So when you guys see the next shoe, whenever it's this year, early next year, you know that's why. And we are potentially going to try to work on, you know, maybe restocking some things and bringing things back. Depend on, depending on the supply chain and how things kind of play out in China and with our with Equalizer out there. But let me ask you this one last thing. If you could design a shoe, which I know you will eventually get to that point where maybe you draw and you just have a full hands-on process, is there any inspiration or anything that you would like want that to look like potentially? A blueprint. I actually tried to do this uh, with Adidas and I wanted to like tell a story through a blueprint to show you how to become successful when you have, when you start from nothing. So it'll kind of be like a busy shoe, but if you ever see a blueprint is blue and white, and uh, they got all these like cool lines and cool artwork running through it. And that's why I always like saw myself, you know, doing something similar like that uh, if I were able to design a shoe. And like I said, I tried to do it a while back with Adidas. They just, we just couldn't do it at the time. And, uh, you know, but it, it, I thought it would have been sick, <laughs> like, if, you know, if you got something. Actually a dope that, idea. You know, just, just to show you, like, because a lot of people try to still, not still, but use the same blueprint as I use for a while, like through, whether it be through YouTube or training or this and that. And, uh, you know, I, I just think, you know, and I don't have no problem with it. So I, I I was trying to mimic somebody too. So I just think it would be sick, you know, if they could fill a part of something like, okay, this is, this the shoe is telling the story. Now, obviously you put too much on it, you make it look kind of crazy, but um, just something simple and clean that are, that you could tell, okay, it's a blueprint and it's somewhat telling a story. What's your favorite shoe of all time? Do you have one? Uh, Honestly, like the Jordan, like 11s. Okay, yeah. Like are the- like one of my favorites. Uh, Space Jams or something? I really like our shoes, to be honest. I, it's just like crazy. I know it sounds... It's biased. <laughs> it sounds biased, but I really like our shoe. Um I don't know. I don't know. There, there's a few of them out there that I really like, but if I like right off top, Jordan 11s mm-hmm. are, are some of my favorite shoes, bro. Or like the sevens, Jordan yeah. seven. You know, that was such a big thing growing up when you're young is just to have a pair of Jordans, you know, and to collect Jordans. I used to do that. And me, my thing is I would never keep them clean, but I liked having them because, you know, your favorite player was Jordan, you know, it's one of my favorite players of all time. And, uh, you know, the commercials and everything, they just made you want to buy him and his shoe and feel, do the things that he does. And it's just, you know, and some people at the time actually believed it. Like, if they wear the shoe, like, they'll, I wear Air Jordans, I'll be able to fly in the air. You know, some people actually, like, bought it for that reason. Because I remember the uh, the swoosh shoe, this thing that you pumped up, is pump. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on Every the pump, tongue, and people pump. thought like you would jump higher, but you, you're not gonna jump any higher. Like, you gotta actually work on your legs and bounce and <laughs> be athletic. But you know, it, it was such a good way to market. I, I remember back then, you know, you, I remember the commercials pumping your shoes yeah, up. I, that, yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. exactly yeah, who was in. <laughs> Yeah, you want to duck after you pump the shoes up. Like, it's like a balloon or something. Like, got like helium in the shoes. <laughs> uh, but but it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of shoes out there. Just come to mind is, is that one off top. Okay, cool. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff within the lab coming up. Like I said, Dev will be on the podcast a lot more. But the whole point is just to do quick segments, catch up, and just kind of give you guys some insider knowledge and things that you haven't really had a chance to see before. So the last thing I'll ask you, Dev, is Creator Core is, has got started. We got Marcellus. We got the hoodie that just came out, basically sold out. And we got a lot of cool things, I think, coming for the Creator Core. Without saying the person's name and all that kind of stuff, like, what are you just excited about with us building, 
you know, this uh, next the fact step that I don't have to do all the work by myself. <laughs> that's what I'm most excited about. Like, you know, cause it's just like, you want to build with the team. And so yeah. um, you want to have strong individuals that are rapidly trying to grow the game. And I feel like the people that, um, that we're getting ready to add are going to help, help to do that for sure. So that's what I'm most excited about for sure. <laughs> It'll be the first time you want to, to make every single piece of content for the brand. Man. It'll, it'll be a nice a lot of work. Break. A lot of work. <laughs> I think people <laughs> underestimate that, but stay Man. tuned for that. We got a lot, a lot of cool stuff on the way and coming. Uh, we'll have Devin sell on some, on some new podcasts and some new episodes soon. <laughs>